No, he's got a rocket. He's got a little pack. rocket booster. Oh, jeez. Now he's riding it. Yeah. Now, in theory, this could actually work. Really? No. <laughs> oh, 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 come on. That's just cruel, man. All right, just cause four. What are we doing, Rhino? What is even happening? Whoa, we just got into a <laughs> helicopter. Now we're just firing missiles at everything we see. You know, let's say you're on set, you're doing an action movie. You got to create a fireball. You know, we're seeing a lot of fireball explosions. We know that they're not typically like that. But what do you got to do to cause like that fireball explosion of fire? You know, the red, you know, the, the red and yellow, the beautiful colors. Uh, the red and yellow is a lot of gasoline and oxidizers. You're trying to get is that beautiful color coming off of something. So a lot of times it's gasoline mixed in and blown upwards into the air or another type of fuel so that you get just an absolute burst of fire. Very beautiful. I feel like a lot of video games take that artistic license where just everything has that effect no matter what you do. Oh, absolutely. Then you know you can additionally put in a bunch of sparks coming off, some DSC, something to really push it out there. Get out of here. That's one way to get into a vehicle and just <laughs> launch and paint and destruction onto everything. Grand Theft Tank. Yeah. I love it. I Come wish in, I had an instant, instantly deployable squirrel suit and parachute. Squirrel suit, parachute, grappling hook, a little bit of everything. Oh you just stay in there. Is, I gotta play this game, and this is so awesome. Oh, he's got a rocket He's got a little pack. rocket booster? Oh, jeez. This guy's got everything, man. Going up real high to where the air is too thin to actually do these, but... Explosions I mean, I very hard in the to... air. <laughs> Yeah, you just launch it. through an explosion. Probably air mixture up here. Yeah, right. Get right up on top of your target. There's probably going to be a lot less collateral damage if you blow something up in the middle of the air than you do on the ground, right? You're going to have the same amount of shrapnel, but it's more contained and it's just going to be falling down in one area. It looks like it was all over the ocean. Right. So right. you're just building a coral roof at that point. <laughs> He's got that instantly shoulder fired. It looks like almost like, I mean, obviously rocket launcher, maybe AT4, something not very well guided, right? That rocket launcher he's got. Definitely right in there, shoot at the target. And as you saw in the last clip, he just tossed it after he was done with it. Once you got no more ammo, that's kind of the best thing to do in any of these. Oh no, I'm just gonna find a, oh, a rocket. <laughs> I doubt that would happen in many of these things. Looks like you might have like a 203 on there or something like that. Could be. Um... Oh, in the head! Oh, some kind of this looks like a device. mini version of the Fulton recovery system where you got the people attached to the balloons and then they get carried up and then get embarrassed yeah. and we have to write home to their mom. It's so funny. He's got the grappling hook and stuff like that. What are some things people were like, would you really realistically use? You got a helicopter bearing down on you. Is a rocket launcher probably the best or maybe a rocket guided or radar guided rocket system or something like that? Probably service to air missile or something like that. An RPG is the one nice behind one. me. Even something like the tow to missile launcher you have here where it's a wire guided so you can guide all the way to your target. Definitely not a portable model. You definitely want to sit there and fire. A little bit more portable, but doesn't quite have the oomph to take it out. Now something like uh, a surface to air missile would be a lot better it tracks the heat signature of your helicopter goes right for it complete kill watch that thing fall to the ground in a burning mess oh my goodness what on is top doing? of a crane how many amazing action sequences have we gotten on top of cranes we got 007 we got uh, true lies like adding rocket boosters of some sort to the end of the crane making oh, it, spin to get it to swing around yeah oh, look at <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is probably not going to be good for your neighborhood recovery uh, efforts. Oh, no! Oh! Those rockets have a lot of power. Oh, yeah, here we go. Jamming a bunch of rockets. Dude, this game is like 90% fun and 10% realism, I think, is what we're looking at. I like the physics on it, being whipped all the way around. Yeah, I've seen some probably wild videos of Apaches flying too low, and then they clip a tree. You know, you really do have to watch out for like things like wires, things like that. A lot of things that can come up from the ground to include rocks, dust. If it gets sucked into the impeller system of a helicopter, you're gonna be going down. Same with too much water. If you think that it has to go in the water, enough getting sucked up through creates a lot of weight and disable the engine very quickly. It's a gas turbine engine, so you know, you're gonna be sucking up a lot of air into that area. What is this madness? What are you planning? This Sticking is like some Metal Gear Solid level creative explain. gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> That's just cruel, man. Oh, gross. Oh, you're a sick individual, whoever you are. Nah, that was 
definitely jet fuel exploding. Big red bright explosion. Oh, something you definitely don't want to be shooting is a uh, fuel tank of any oh! sort. <laughs> I love it. Turning into a little rocket propel, a giant rocket propel. What do you think was in that? More jet fuel? Uh, I would say more of an airlines fuel, like propane, natural gas, something like that. Now he's riding it, yeah! Now, in theory, this could actually work. Really? Absolutely, that's why, um, if not all propane tanks these days have a cage on the top protecting the valve. Almost any aerosol bottle, any oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, any high pressure vessel is gonna have the top cage so that you can't break it off, or if it drops, it doesn't break off. Most air and gas come with a cover that goes on the top specifically for that reason. Under high pressure, it will launch forward. Ah. Even if the flammable fuel or whatever might be in that container wasn't actually lit, the amount of, of actual pressure being shot out of the back would push it forward. I don't know about at higher rates and across the storage, <laughs> but... We'll get a rocket scientist in here. Yeah. Looks like he launched flares into the into the big ball up there. Flares are small rockets. Giant fuel storage or something like that. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, epic absolutely. baby. Above ground fuel storage. <laughs> <laughs> That's like little those little uh, those little firework flowers that spin around. They got one little thing they spin around on the ground. Yep. This is awesome, man. Oh no! Fault recovery system! So the balloon to pull it upward. Yeah, the balloon pulls it up, and you post it on the internet. Then the rockets make it go wherever. <laughs> Beautiful explosion in the air. What did they ever do to you? I don't know, but this guy's making fireworks at this point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is awesome. The auto fireworks show. This poor third world country, they're just trying to live their lives. So it looks like he's launching mortars off the boat. You know, you hear about missions, uh, things like World War II, when they want to like, they swim, they scuba dive up to the ship, they attach the explosive and they take off, you know. Same kind of stuff though, right? You know, military application, we're using the same kind of materials though. Very similar. Nothing's really changed about the sabotage nature of our buds and SEAL teams being able to covertly come up to a ship or, or anywhere they need to, to demolish and plant some explosives, whether these days it's something to disable a, a vessel or vehicle or just cause mayhem and destruction. You know, you see a lot of stuff like in movies, video games, where you're shooting off rounds to like ignite explosives and stuff like that. I mean, is that, I mean, does it depend on the kind of thing or whatever, if you could cause a spark? Uh, most will not. Uh, you could have an incendiary device for an incinerate around or something like a tracer that would have burning fuel behind the rounds, which could cause it to go. Likely you're not shooting it right at the, the fuel source. Uh, you're shooting it to light the fumes that come off of it. Yeah, it looks like he had like an incendiary round or a rocket round from the sniper rifle. I don't know that I've ever seen anything like that. Now we're going to a great target, place where there's a lot of fuel. <laughs> Something that a cool guy could definitely walk away from. What you don't see is the huge tanks of flammable fuel underneath the pavement, which is going to cause a huge explosion if it's ignited. Your pumps are literally just pumping up from giant bladders underneath the earth, which is going to hold thousands of gallons of fuel. Right. Again, we're doing our little grapple tech. Oh man, he's Catching gonna he's got something up his sleeve. Other. I mean this would work great for if helicopters were to come by this area. <laughs> I love it. Rolling, rolling, yeah. rolling. Just Beautiful. follow, rolling, rolling. <laughs> oh yeah. When you guys are tasked with making something go explode or something like that, that takes a lot of, you gotta get a lot of training and you gotta be certified and stuff like that. Cause that's a big responsibility when you do stuff like this, right? Absolutely. We hold pyrotechnics license at both the state and federal levels. There's a lot of training that goes involved with these. There's a lot of calculations of explosions, how this far the safe distance needs to be, what we can do. There's a lot of factors to calculate. That was just a very big ball of pretty fire. Probably an aerosolized, an aerosolized fuel going off all at once, like a thermobaric bomb, sucking all the, the available oxygen into that area. I got to do about a week's worth of PA work on a film called Only the Brave. It's a lot of fire they used. And they had the actors, you know, a safe distance away, but they had this uh, a structure, just a wall of, of flame, just all these pipes and everything. And they would just create this wall of flame, you know, and then they could enhance that with computer effects. But that thing was hot. 
hot, man. You were even 30, 40 feet away. You could still feel the heat, man. Absolutely. It is fire and propelled by high pressure fuel will create a hotter burning flame. Most of the time on, on film and TV sets, we're going to be using a controlled flame. A lot of times it's propane. Lots of propane tanks being fed into a manifold, manifolds hooked up to hoses that are going into that wall, hooked up to many pipes. The blast radius that we're going to have, um, I've been on a couple demolition ranges on Camp Pendleton. You can't set off any explosions on an overcast day because concussive blasts will go up, radiate off the clouds and come back into dense populated area and have in the past blown out windows. Oh, interesting. Wow. So that actually refracted off, kind of refracted off the clouds and back down. That's great. I haven't heard about that. There's also the, the chance of having a high humidity in areas, any issues with rain and weather. A lot of these systems don't want to be wet unless they're built to be wet. Mm. So on a film day, you know, everything would be called off because of the weather. Oh no, oh, get out of there. Sinking ship. <laughs> Don't arrange deck tears on the Titanic. Don't be trapped underneath anything. Oh! I was really worried about him there for a second. Firing things again, a little close to comfort, but. Right, yeah. You can definitely feel the heat wave off of that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, rapid fire, shoulder fire, uh, I think we've got it to God mode. Rapid fire, baby, yeah. Yeah, not the greatest idea of shooting, you know, rockets into the ship that you're currently on. <laughs> that's one way to drown everybody. Ridiculous. <laughs> go, baby, go. Come on now. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, what's happening? I think that would be a great way to blow up a bridge. Yeah, and it looks like this game was designed that everything can be destroyed. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, what are you doing, buddy? No. Taking out a bridge is a great way of causing pay to the enemy, denying them yeah. access to certain areas. That's a fast reloader. Must be a nice, uh, efficient auto That's reloader. That's a fast driving tank. Yeah! Oh my goodness. What Hold is down the fire button and drive till you can drive no more. I don't think there's a just cause for this amount of destruction. I just don't think it's justified. No, especially against the civilian population. Yeah, what do these people ever do to you, man? Well, it looks like they're adding more fuel to the fire in that case. Yeah, we're just in fantasy land right now. This is Metal Gear Solid level creative gameplay, just seeing how creatively we can destroy everything. Now we're on a train of destruction. Yeah! I can hear that train coming. It's coming around the bend. It's hard enough to hit something with a gun on a moving vehicle. I think uh, infinitely harder to fire a tank turret on a moving train. In World War II, they did have those guns, I think, in, I think Germany was developing them, where they were so big they could only be on train tracks. They were just so huge. Absolutely. Those things were used only in World War II because of the destructive nature. It was a cool weapon to think of, but it was just absolutely impractical. You can only move it on railways, so you can only go one way or the other. In order to disable the weapon, all you have to do is take out a small chunk of the railway and you've effectively stopped it moving. The rounds were so huge, it would take an entire, you know, Italian of guys just to get these things loaded, moved around. Just yeah. no point to it, really. The Schwerer Gustav, I think it was. The railway mounted train gun. 80 centimeter railway gun, developed in the late 1930s by Krupp and Rugenvalde. Manufacturers of high explosives and many other things are gonna be usually done under many uh, government contracts. They're gonna hold FELs, Federal Explosive Licenses for manufacturing, for storage, for the hazmat of all these chemicals. You're also gonna be talking about huge sites to be able to store some of these bunkers that could be underground that are gonna be, have to be constantly maintained. When you're talking about manufacturing any of this stuff, a lot of it's under lock and key, a lot of proprietary technologies and invested into it. These aren't things that you're allowed to get as a civilian by the chemicals are kept pretty well guarded. Dude, Quentin, this was ridiculous and awesome. What did you think about all this stuff from Just Cause 4? I think this is just a wet dream of chaos, really. We've got everything going on of explosions, guns, grappling hooks, pulling this into that. You're like a Spider-Man, Superman, multiverse cause of destruction where you're just <laughs> blowing everything up. You're creating chaos everywhere you go. There's no logic to any of this but to have fun. Yeah, that's the only excuse you need, man. It's like every 80 action movie you've ever seen multiplied by a thousand, you know? There's a very paper-thin plot surrounded by a lot of death, destruction, and so many fun things. Whether you're talking about, you know, being able to jump from helicopter to helicopter, pulling yeah. yourself around on a parachute, or just, you know, firing rockets on rockets on rockets on rockets. If you like more amazing content like this, head on over to Gameology's Facebook and YouTube page. Go over to twitch.tv slash myhappyself. You can find me on your local film and TV sets around Hollywood, California, doing amazing special effects and pyrotechnics.